Welcome to our Roundtable Bible Study. We're glad to have you with us once again as we are studying the New Testament and we are looking specifically at the parables of Jesus. Our text today is Luke 7, verses 36 to 50. So if you're able to follow along with us, we encourage you to open your copy of the scriptures. Some of you might be driving in a car. Some of you might be eating dinner. Some of you might just be listening in the background or however you're doing it, if you can, we encourage you to open the scriptures with us. My guest today at the round table is Susan Yutzi. Susan, mm -hmm. we're so glad to have you. Thank you. Susan is one of our very, very capable teachers and she has blessed so many in the ministry here uh, with the gifts that God has given to her. So I look forward to unpacking the scripture with you today, Susan. It's a wonderful text. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you would be so kind to read uh, Luke 7, verses 36 to 50. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Mm. That's such a wonderful account, isn't it? It is. So much so mm -hmm. much beautiful truth arises from this text mm -hmm. here today. There's a couple of striking things that happen at the beginning of this text. Of course, in, in Luke's narrative, it comes right after uh, John the Baptist had sent some messengers to Jesus asking, are you the one we expect? Should we look for another? And, and Jesus gives you know, the answer of, of you know, the works that are being accomplished are messianic. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then he, he has some really good things to say about John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then he asked, you know, what, to what shall I compare this generation? He says, you didn't, and he's speaking specifically of the religious leaders. You didn't accept John the Baptist. You questioned his authority. You don't accept me. You question my authority. Mm -hmm. So he uses a little parable there, right? Like children mm -hmm. playing in the marketplace. Yeah. And, and then right after that, What's striking to me is that one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. Yes. Now, we don't, we don't generally think of Jesus' interaction with the Pharisees along those lines, do we? Mm -mm. What's striking that, uh, that Jesus would be asked by a Pharisee to come have dinner with him? Well, the two don't usually go together. Right. <laughs> uh, Dwight has said before that the Pharisees were poster boys of righteousness. Mm -hmm. They focused on the externals. They uh, meticulously scrutinized, scrutinized people who didn't measure up to their own standards. Mm -hmm. And here is Jesus mm -hmm. coming to a meal. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was given invitations and he accepted invitations. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, that's, that's Jesus to, to want to do this. It's an opportunity to touch people's lives. Yeah, he's not going to turn that down, no. is he? You know, even no. though the Pharisees in general... 
uh, pushed back on him, you know, pretty pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. Um, there there were those Pharisees, mm-hmm. Nicodemus, for example, yeah. who was wanting to know the truth, mm-hmm. and um, and did follow Christ actually. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it it doesn't say up front what the Pharisees' motives were, but we find out later in this narrative that he kind of passes judgment on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not kind of, he does. He He passes judgment (laughs) on Jesus, right? So Mm -hmm. it's striking, first Mm -hmm. of all, it kind of takes us by surprise because Mm -hmm. we've heard so much about the the kind of, of tension that there was between the Pharisees and Jesus. But here Jesus is invited to a Pharisee's house, and he accepts the invitation, he goes. Mm -hmm. The Pharisee's name is Simon. Mm And, and then another striking thing that happens is there is a, a woman who uh, comes in, and that was, that was a common thing, wasn't it? Yes. In those days for, mm-hmm. for, uh, for people from the street to be able to come in and listen to a conversation that's taking place in a house. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jesus was reclined at a table. They're eating dinner. Jesus was reclined at a table. And, uh, and this woman starts to touch Jesus' feet. She's weeping. She's, she, her tears are falling on his feet. She's wiping his feet with her hair. It says that she has ointment with her. It's probably very expensive. Mm-hmm. And it says she was a sinner. Mm-hmm. And as I was reading mm-hmm. your notes earlier, mm-hmm. looking over this, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's right mm-hmm. in the margin. It says she was a sinner. It's like, well, who isn't a sinner, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, the problem is the Pharisee mm-hmm. probably thought he wasn't a sinner. Exactly. Right? Because even Paul gave that testimony. Yeah. Concerning the law, I was blameless. Yeah. And so this Pharisee probably thought the same thing. Yeah, who needs forgiveness? I don't. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So this, mm-hmm. this sinner comes in and touches mm-hmm. Jesus. And, and now we're, we're talking about the parables of Jesus. This text has a very, very short parable in yes. it. Mm-hmm. But there is a lot that is that is learned from it. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me a little bit, Susan, about uh, the the woman's interaction with Jesus. What are, what are your thoughts on that? As she's she's weeping, mm-hmm. she's wiping her feet with her his feet with her hair. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Mm-hmm. One of the things that struck me is her silence. We are not given any words. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So she didn't audibly speak to Jesus that we know of, mm-hmm. but her actions are so profound Wow! and yeah. seem so genuine. Yeah. Um, the weeping, the, the sorrow. Weeping. Yeah. To think that, that the tears fell from her eyes mm. um, and dropped onto his feet, which as we were talking about reclining at a table, you would have been on your left elbow so that your right hand was free to eat, mm. mm-hmm. uh, leaning kind of like at a couch and your feet thrust out behind you. So that puts her in the proximity of Jesus' feet. Okay. And as she wept, those tears fell down. Hmm. Yeah. So she had heard that this man who is reputed to be a prophet, who, mm-hmm. who would get together with tax collectors among all people. They're yes. the most loathed people in the society, mm-hmm. right? You know, mm-hmm. and, and she, he's, he is accepting of them. Mm-hmm. And so she comes in thinking, maybe he will be accepting of me. And so she's weeping. So is is there's a there's a sorrow there. There's a sense of sorrow there. Yeah. Could it be possibly a sense of of release and joy as well? Could be. Uh, could could be. be joyful tears, repentant mm-hmm. tears, mm-hmm. being overwhelmed. Yeah. Yes. So much yeah. going on there, isn't there? Mm-hmm. And you can just it doesn't talk. It doesn't mention the narrative. Doesn't mention Jesus' interaction with her during this time, but. Clearly, he knew what was going on, yeah. and and if nothing else but a glance, she had to have seen uh, tender care and, and acceptance and forgiveness in his eyes, mm-hmm. you know, as she interacted with him on this. And, mm-hmm. and so the the tears the, the the tears of let's say it was a godly sorrow, but her actions spoke so much. Yes, they said so much, didn't they? Yes. It she she was doing the actions of of, of an adoring servant. Because that's what servants did when they come into a household. They would wash the guests' feet. Mm-hmm. Servants did that. And so she was doing the actions of a servant who adored the one yes. of, of whose feet she was washing. Yeah. So um, uh, now, now then it talks about, in verse 39, the Pharisee, Simon. What was Simon's mm-hmm. reaction to this? <laughs> Unpack that for us. Uh, thinking very much to himself uh, Mm. that if this truly were a prophet, so he's already judged Jesus, clearly he's not a prophet, or he would have recoiled from someone this dirty. Uh, I had read one time that Pharisees wouldn't even walk in the shadow of someone that they deemed to be 
unclean. Yeah, this necessary right. separation, oh, yes. right? Can't Righteous be, separation. Can't, right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's telling himself this can't be a true prophet, hmm. which back in earlier verses here, uh, we had seen that uh, Jesus has come to help his people back in 7 verse 16. A great prophet has appeared among us, right. they said. And so he's saying to himself, well, he may be seen as a prophet, but clearly he's not one. Hmm. So he sized Jesus up right there. So the Pharisee was interested in inviting Jesus into the house because clearly mm-hmm. Jesus was a teacher, a rabbi, because he had followers and mm-hmm. people loved listening to him. He would draw crowds. He was a teacher. And the Pharisee brings him in thinking, you know, wonder if he is a prophet. Maybe he could be a prophet. Okay, yeah. so yeah. this woman encounters, Jesus in this, encounters this woman. She's wiping his feet with her tears and her hair. And, and then he makes this judgment of Jesus. Well, he couldn't be a prophet. If he, because if he was a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this is. Yes. And if he knew what kind of woman this is, he would not be letting her touch him. No, have nothing to do with her. So <laughs> it's what, he, what he's, he's, he's presenting here, I think what is so common today among more, your more strict performance-oriented rigid systems is, is what's so important is that we keep up our testimony. Yeah. And we have to keep up our testimony. And that means that we don't associate with certain people. Mm-hmm. We're not found in the company of certain people. Yeah. And that could be so damning, can't it? It can. You know, we, we sort, we categorize. This person yeah. doesn't measure up. He's right. not worthy. She's not worthy of my attention. Sure. Labeling. Yeah. We're, it's so yeah. common. Even, mm-hmm. unfortunately, among many who would call themselves Christian today, we just label people by mm-hmm. their appearance or, mm-hmm. or by their action. Mm-hmm. You know, But Jesus doesn't do that. No. You know, and no. and that's, that's really what this what this account is about. So as you pointed out, science, the scriptures t- say, Simon is thinking to himself. <laughs> mm-hmm. He doesn't vocalize this. Yeah. He's thinking to himself, this man can't be a prophet or he would know what kind of woman this is. And if he knew what kind of woman this is, he wouldn't let her touch him. Yeah. So clearly he's not a prophet. He's made this judgment of Jesus. He says all of that in his mind. And then it says, <laughs> and then Jesus Answer him, <laughs> and it's like this had to startle him. Like, okay, Jesus is saying this, and and the question he's asking me has everything to do with what I was just thinking about. Yeah, lines right? up perfectly. So, yes. Yeah, Simon, I have something to say to you. It wasn't even a, a a question necessarily, but he does end it with a question, mm-hmm. and Simon says, "Go ahead, teacher." Mm-hmm. And so here it here it is the. Uh, um, Go through the go through the parable for yeah, us here. A just second. two verses, so it's so right. brief as as Luke writes. But there's a money lender, uh, and there are two creditors. Uh, one owes five hundred days wages worth of money, and the other fifty days wages. Neither of them has the ability to pay. Right. And I love that for the inability to pay. Wow. Is that not a picture it is. of all of us before it is, Jesus? Isn't it? Yep. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so the money lender canceled the debts of both, which makes me think of Romans 3, 23 and 24, where we are justified freely, Hmm. freely, Freely. if we ever grasp Hmm. that by the redemption that came in Jesus Hmm. Christ. And that's what forgiveness is. That's a good, you know, canceling a debt is what forgiveness is. It is. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, the moneylender canceled the debt of both debtors. One owed a much more significant amount one yeah. owed a lesser amount. A denarius was about a day's wage, mm-hmm. as you pointed out. And and uh, one thing that I noticed and I observed, I just wrote in my margin here, you know, one of the debtors owed 500, the other owed 50. It's a pretty significant difference. But the truth of the matter is that difference is only from a human perspective. Yes. Because from God's eyes, you know, it that's not... That's not the point. They were both in debt to him, and neither mm-hmm. of them could pay. Yes. So both of them needed their debts forgiven. Mm-hmm. And and uh, you know, some of us may think, well, I'm not as bad as we. We tend to compare ourselves with each other. Mm-hmm. I'm not as bad as this person. I haven't done as many bad things as that person. Yeah. Well, I'm not a murderer. I haven't robbed a bank. Yeah. Uh, I haven't. I've been faithful to my wife. All these things. I've I've grown up a pretty good person. I'm a pretty good moral person. And so we compare ourselves to each other. So you know, and we we think of people who definitely seriously need forgiveness, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And that the point is not so much how much. I need forgiven. The point is by whom I need to be forgiven. Yes, and that I need it. 
Yes. And that I absolutely need mm-hmm. it because I am incapable of paying yes. it. Yes, so, yes. You know. I am that sinner. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus uh, ends the parable with a question, which one of them do you think loved him more? Mm-hmm. He canceled the debt of 50, he canceled the debt of 500. Which one of you think loved mm-hmm. him more? And don't you love how Jesus throws in questions? It was good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, and Simon answered, the one, I suppose. Mm-hmm. He's not really, he's not really, he says, I didn't really sign up for this interaction here, you know, but I suppose the one mm-hmm. whom he canceled the larger debt. Mm-hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, where is Jesus yeah. going with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. So, mm-hmm. so where would you say Jesus was mm-hmm. going with this? <laughs> He's going to take this everyday experience and turn it around so that Simon can really see himself. Wow. Yeah. 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 And he, Jesus was a master at that, yeah. wasn't Whether he? it's a meal yeah. or whether it's borrowing money, which is something that happens in everyday life, mm-hmm. that's how Jesus took those everyday experiences, mm. wove them mm. in so that you began to see a condition. Am I in this story? Mm. Yeah. Is this mm. about me? Mm. Yeah. Do mm. I have a need? Mm. Yeah. And Simon, I probably at this point was beginning to think, um, you know, this, I've, I've judged this woman and I've judged this man, and and Jesus is really challenging He's his judging labels me. right here. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, Jesus says to him, "Do you see? Do you see this woman? Of course, he sees this woman. He'd noticed her. He's already labeled her, judged her, and labeled her, uh-huh. right? And and then Jesus makes a contrast. What's the yeah. contrast that Jesus makes between yeah. this woman and Simon the Pharisee, who was a poster boy of righteousness? Yeah. Well, there there are several uh, depictions here. I marked them in my Bible. The the pronouns you and she. Uh, you didn't give me water for my feet, which a sandal was just a, a sole of a shoe with a strap on it. Yeah. So whether you came through dry dirt, you'd be dusty, or whether you walked through water, you'd be muddy. Right. Your feet needed cleansing. Uh, she wet my feet not with just water, hmm. but with her own bodily tears. And then, according to the Talmud, I think it says a woman was only to undo her hair in front of her husband. Hmm. And she took her hair down in love and used whatever she had to dry my feet. Hmm. And that was her very own hair. Hmm. Hmm. And then the second depiction there is you didn't even greet me with a kiss which would have been like a, a tap on the shoulder and then a kiss on the cheek for males. Right. But she, from the time I entered, has continually been kissing my feet. Wow. As if she couldn't stop. Wow. The love just kept pouring. Yeah. Hmm. And then the hmm. third picture, you didn't just put uh, um, olive oil, which would have been very common in that day. Everybody mm-hmm. had that. Mm-hmm. On my head, which is the place of anointing. But she poured, look at that verb, hmm. perfume, which... May have been spikenard, could have been yeah. balsam. We don't really know. That would have been very costly yes. though, for her. Yes, yeah. and right. for any woman mm-hmm. to possess that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she poured it on my feet, mm. a very humble place. Mm. So he's contrasting here. You are my host. Mm-hmm. I'm your guest, mm-hmm. Simon, and look what she has poured yeah. out to me. Yeah. And Simon was probably viewing her as like an intruder Certainly. who was completely unworthy of yes. even being there, let alone touching mm-hmm. either of them, right? Sure. sure. And 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 Jesus, here's here's where here's where the punchline comes in. <laughs> Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are mm-hmm. forgiven, mm-hmm. for she loved much. Yeah. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And and of course, that loving little that would be Simon, right? Because mm-hmm. He's not a sinner, yeah. so he doesn't really need forgiveness. Yeah. He's He is counting on his own righteousness. Mm-hmm. He doesn't need the forgiveness, so he's not going to love God, yeah. let alone the Son of God, yeah. who is who is in his very presence there. So um, the, the, the fact that she loved, that she demonstrated so much love to Jesus mm-hmm. manifested that she recognized how much forgiveness she oh, needed from so. Jesus, mm-hmm. that he was one who could forgive her. Yeah. And so she demonstrated that love. You know, it says that she was a sinner, so she was a person of mm-hmm. ill repute in town. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and she was recognizing that her life, the way she was living it, was not the way 
that God had designed her to be. And mm -hmm. she was there was remorse there, the, the tears of, you know, falling on his feet, wiping his feet with her tears, the godly sorrow there. Mm -hmm. But I would I would have to say probably tears of joy also in feeling the acceptance, the, the forgiveness of this great man. Yeah. You know, and and meanwhile the Pharisee has done nothing but label and condemn. Mm -hmm. What a difference between the two, uh, the difference between grace and, and judgment um, there, that, that she recognized the grace of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Simon, who needed to recognize that in his self-righteousness, all he could do is just label and judge. And yeah. there stands Jesus loving both of them. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's that, just amazing, isn't, isn't it? It, it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't give any more of uh, of of the Pharisees of Simon's response, does it? No. But uh, um, he said, "Your sins are forgiven," and that elicits a response from the rest of the people standing oh, at the table. Oh, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it, he's he's saying something only God has the right to say. Mm -hmm. Well, that's appropriate, isn't it? <laughs> On the basis of his authority, he is that Messiah, isn't yes. he? Yes. Who is this who yeah. even forgives sins? Mm -hmm. That is actually a very good question. Yeah. That should have made them stop and think. You know, no mere man, no mere man who was a good man mm -hmm. would dare to say, your sins are forgiven because yeah. he doesn't have that authority to do that yeah. but jesus did have that authority yeah and so he said to the woman your faith has saved you go in peace there's mm -hmm. a lot wrapped up in that just little mm -hmm. phrase there isn't there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your faith has saved you it, it wasn't her love that no. saved her it wasn't her demonstrations that saved her. it wasn't her tears that saved her it was her faith yeah. she recognized jesus for who he was, mm -hmm. and she entrusted herself to him, yes. and and then she Jesus said, "Go in peace." Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing mm -hmm. to be able to to say, isn't it? To mm -hmm. to be at peace with God, therefore mm -hmm. you can live in peace, at peace with yourself, at peace with your neighbors, mm -hmm. be ruled by the peace of God, to be able to go in peace. Who Try to imagine that, we had this discussion earlier, try to imagine mm -hmm. how radically different her life might have been yeah. as she leaves yeah. that house. How is her life different now? What's it gonna look like now in the next mm -hmm. few days in the day to day from the life that she had to now that she has encountered mm -hmm. Christ, she has his forgiveness. He says, mm -hmm. your faith has saved you, now go in peace. Mm -hmm. My goodness, what a difference that must have made for her. Well, that, I mean, you know? Scripture teaches people who are in the kingdom of God live like this. Hmm. This is what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. So I, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd love to know exactly what happened to her after this point. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Susan, you were sharing with me a, a, a personal uh, story from your own experience of, yeah. of forgiveness. Uh, would I'd like you to share that with those that are studying this with us. I'd be glad to. I, I shared with uh, Rich that this particular lesson prompted memories of a time when I, as a sinner, um, had come to saving faith in Jesus Christ, and I began to realize what biblical forgiveness looks like. And I sat down one day in 1997, and I wrote a letter of forgiveness to my dad, who was an alcoholic, had been maritally unfaithful to my mom, physically abusive to my mom, difficult childhood growing up in that home. Um, and I wrote this letter to my dad after I came to Saving Faith in Jesus because I had held such anger toward my dad and hatred to the point I shared with you. Uh, before Lewis and I married, I told Lewis I was not going to have children because I did not want my dad to be a grandfather oh, to my wow. children. Now that is deep mm -hmm. retaliation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I came to saving faith and began to understand how, how God had freed and released this burden for me. And so isn't my dad the same sinner in need of redemption and forgiveness too? So would my dad forgive me? So I sat down one day and I wrote a letter and I composed it in several different sections. And the first section simply said, Dad, I know it's strange to open a box from the mailbox and see a letter from me. What in the world is all this about? And after he read the first section, he opened part two. And I put on there, isn't this like a school teacher to give directions? <laughs> <laughs> I found a Hallmark card that was pertinent. And it said, I've been doing some house cleaning in my head and heart. 
and I've come across a lot of stuff I've swept under my own personal carpet. Hmm. And one of the things I uncovered was the wrong way I have treated you. And the more I've looked at this, the more I realized I owe you an apology. I am very sorry. The third part of the letter, and as I shared with you, I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall and see what my dad's reaction was reading this. Yeah. Uh, thank you for staying with this. This is quite a package, I know. How did all this get started? And I shared how at age 42, God saved my soul. And I began to live in a very different way. And what God had begun to say to me, Susan, you have to be willing to extend to others what I have freely given to you. In the fourth part of the letter, I said that forgiveness is a choice. And from the scripture in Micah 7, 19, God says that he will have compassion on us. He will actually tread our sins underfoot and hurl them into the depths of the sea. And I had a little seashell that I had saved from a beach trip with my dad years before, and I actually put that into the package. Hmm. So there was a little object lesson in there. Hmm. The fifth part of the letter was the one that took me the longest because I realized I had to write my dad and tell him the things that I liked and loved about him. And I, I sat at my dining room table for hours trying to come up with something that I remembered about my dad, the way he whistled the song, The Bridge Over the River Kwai. Every time I'd hear that song whistled, I thought about my dad, uh, the way he worked crossword puzzles in ink, little things like that okay. were all that I could come up with wow. to think of. Wow. And then the very last part would be the lyrics from a Michael Card song hmm. about how God is a great forgiver. And the song is called The Things We Leave Behind and the freedom we find from the things that we walk away from hmm. when we trust Jesus Christ hmm. and accept his new way of seeing life. Six She's days passed. I heard nothing from my father. Hmm. On the seventh day, he called me and chewed me out and asked me, why in the world did I send such a letter? Because he should have been the one asking for forgiveness. So he didn't, he didn't understand. Wow. But as a, as a non-believer, mm -hmm. I have to understand that he couldn't think in those terms. Mm, right. Yeah. But I shared the gospel with him many times. In fact, Lewis drove one time four hours to my home place just to talk with my dad and turned around and drove four hours back wow. to share the gospel with my dad. Yeah. It's amazing as you were sharing that story, uh, and it's a wonderful story of forgiveness, how God, mm. um, because of your forgiveness from Absolutely. God, that you are capable of forgiving. And, and you see it like just with the Pharisee who was in his self-righteousness criticizing the sinner, mm -hmm. where you recognized your dad had sinned against you. Yeah. Um, I had sinned against him. You had, you needed forgiveness also. Yes. And uh, and so you can live in the peace of God's mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. and therefore can forgive him. God's peace frees you. Yeah. To be forgiving. Yeah. What a wonderful truth. What a beautiful story that is. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. being willing to share that with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, it goes so well together with this. You know, whether you identify with the woman, or with the Pharisee. Mm -hmm. You know, both of us can identify with both to some degree or another, yeah. right? And yeah. we, we do have a tendency to compare ourselves to others. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not as bad as that person. Mm -hmm. But the question of Jesus is, you know, uh, you know which one loves more, the one yeah. that is forgiven more? And, and I think what we need to recognize is we all have a debt that we cannot pay. Exactly. No matter how great our debt is or how small we think it is, mm -hmm. we still can't pay it. Yeah. The point is against whom we have sinned mm -hmm. and who we need forgiveness from. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it pretty much infinite, doesn't yes. it? We yes. All, we all have this insurmountable debt mm -hmm. that we need forgiven. Mm -hmm. And there is one who can forgive it, and Jesus says, "The one, one your savior. sins are forgiven." Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and and when they are, because our faith saves us, mm -hmm. then He will say to us, "Go in peace." Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I dare say, from my interactions <laughs> with you, that you mm -hmm. uh, have definitely experienced mm -hmm. the peace of God, I have. even I do. even after the mm -hmm. the tremendous difficulties that you grew up with mm -hmm. with your dad. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Thank you for sharing that with us again, Susan. Absolutely. That was, that was good. So as yeah. we, uh, any other thoughts that you want to leave us with as we uh, come to a close on this study today? You, 
Uh, yeah, have... uh, you'll notice some flowers on the table. You commented on those when I walked in with them. <laughs> One of these is a mock orange. Looks like an orange blossom, but it's called a mock orange. Has a fragrance mm. similar to an orange, but it's not an orange. And I brought this in because this made me think of the Pharisee who lived his life thinking he was okay, following all these regulations, but not even realizing he was lacking love in his life and, and what he truly needed. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So how many people go through life thinking they're in a good position, they're, they're in an okay spot, mm. and yet they're missing the goodness that God wants to give mm. and pour out upon them. The rose I brought in, if you look, there's a little tiny bud underneath on each side, and then there's a full blossom. This morning, I, I thought about this hymn, Lo, how a rose there blooming. Isaiah twas foretold Jesus, this rose I have in mind. With Mary we behold it, the virgin mother kind, to show God's love aright. She bore to men a savior when half gone was the night. That flower whose fragrance tender with sweetness fills the air dispels with glorious splendor the darkness that is everywhere, just mm. like with the mock. Mm. True man, Jesus was and is, yet mm. very God. From sin and death he saves us and lightens every load. Mm. So for all of those who were there at that meal at that Pharisee's house, mm. whatever they saw, mm. there was the Savior standing right there among them yeah. who had everything they needed. And what an encounter this yeah. woman had uh, as she mm -hmm. as she uh, ministered to Jesus mm -hmm. and, and yet the forgiveness, the release that she received from him yeah. and the joy and the peace that that brought yeah. her because yeah. of his forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us also. Certainly. Yes. So it's been it's been good to have you here today, Susan, at My the joy. round table mm -hmm. and to unpack. There's so much more that can be said from this, isn't <laughs> a lot, there? A lot. But, um, mm -hmm. But that, that's good for today, and, and we thank you for joining us today at the Roundtable in studying Luke 7. Um, uh, if you have any questions about this, you have any interaction you would like to give on this, you can do so at pastor at gbcnc.org, and we'd love to hear from you. And, uh, and if you have any questions on that, I'll be sure to pass them on to Susan. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> So, but we do, I certainly do appreciate your insights into scripture and oh. your, uh, your, how seriously you take the text of the love word of to, God. Love to be in God's word. So love to, to unfold and unpack yes. the treasures of God's truth. It's yes. a wonderful thing. So yes. thank you again for joining us. And as soon as, Susan, if you would be so kind, would you close us in a word of prayer? Certainly. That uh, the Lord would take his word and plant it deep in our hearts and our yes. minds. And Father, this day we are most grateful for what you have already shown to us, Lord, and for the salvation that you give. I pray for someone who may be on the outside looking in with questions, with doubts, uh, with self-righteousness, that they begin to see themselves within this very lesson, Lord. Use this to accomplish your mighty purposes. And I pray for those of us who know you in relationship, that you will clean out the mess that's in our lives mm. and show us what kingdom life truly looks like, what it is to follow you, to live as a reflection of you as we walk on this earth. Use us in mighty ways, Lord, as we yield to you. In Jesus' strong and powerful name, we pray our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining Amen. us. God bless you.